Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at measures of spread. And most specifically, we're going to be looking at variance in standard deviation. Now, the most basic kind of um, measure of spread is going to be dealing with your range. The range is simply just taking the maximum value and subtracting from that the minimum value. And that will give you your range. But that's a pretty basic measure of spread. There's other measures of spread that we're going to be looking at. Uh, like I said, specifically, uh, variance and standard deviation. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on finding the variance and standard deviation of an entire population. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to find the variance and standard deviation of a sample, which is going to be a much smaller sample size. Um, but again, everything that we're talking about in this video is looking at the entire population. So let's look at some terminology dealing with variance and standard deviation that we need to be familiar with. So first off, we're going to use Greek letters uh, that are to symbolize the mean, standard deviation, and the variance. Now the mean, we symbolize that with that funky little symbol there. That's the Greek letter called mu. The standard deviation is the symbol here for sigma. And then we have the variance. Now the variance is the sigma being squared. So we'll talk about how to find that in a minute. So the variance for a population is calculated from the squares of the deviations. Well, what's a deviation? Well, deviation is the difference of each data from the mean. Okay. So we'll look at a set of data here in a minute that will start to make sense. This is a lot of words. There's a lot of definitions here, a lot of new uh, key terms that you want to familiarize yourself with. But it'll be a little easier when we look at a sample, so, or at an example. So just hang with me for a second here. Now the population variance is the mean of the squared deviations. In other words, it is where we take the sum of the squared deviations. And we're going to divide that by the number of objects in the population. So that gives us the population variance. The population squared deviation is the square root of the population variance. I know that's a lot. So let's take a second now and let's look at an example and try to make sense out of all this that we just talked about. So let's look here. It says, find, it says to find the variance in standard deviation for the heights of the dolphins, treating them as a population. So we're treating this situation as if it was an entire population of dolphins that we're looking at. So we have some different heights. Now, the first thing we need to figure out is the mean. Because remember, the mean is symbolized by this symbol here, which is called mu. So we first need to figure out what the mean is, because in order to find the deviation, the deviation represents how much do each of these value, values deviate or differ from the mean. So again, the mean is where we're going to add these all, these all up and divide by how many there are. So if I add up all of these numbers and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm going to end up with a value of 75. Okay, so the mean is 75. So now I've got to figure out, well, what is my deviation for each of these? So to do that, you take this value minus your mean. So we're going to take 70 minus 75. Now there's going to be times where we have a deviation that's a negative number, and that's what's going to happen here. 70 minus 75 is negative 5. I'm going to take 71 minus 75. 71 minus 75 gives me negative 4. 70, so this is also going to be negative 4. So this will be negative 2. This will be negative 1. 75 minus 75 is 0. 78 minus 75, now we're dealing with positive numbers. This will be 3, 4, 4, and 5. So now here we have a spot for the totals. If you add all these up, negative 5 plus negative 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 2 plus negative 1 and so on, if you add all those up, you should get zero as your answer. That's a way to test to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Now we're going to find out what the square of the deviation is. So to do that, we're going to take and square each of these values. So negative 5, when you square that, becomes a positive 25. Negative 4 squared is 16, and so on. So this would be 4, this would be a positive 1, 0 squared is 0, 3 squared is 9, so these would be 16 and 25. 
So now we're going to use the sum of the deviation to figure out the variance because I just want to go back up here. This is very important that you understand to find the variance. It's the mean or the average of the squared deviation. So what we have to do is we have to, in order to find the average, we're going to add all these values up and divide by how many there are and that will give us the variance. So to add these all up, you'd end up getting 128. So we're going to take, and there's a total of 10 dolphins heights that we're dealing with. So I'm going to take 128 divided by 10, and that gives me 12.8. So that is my variance, and that is going to be in square inches. The reason why that would be in square inches is because remember what we did is we took our heights, took those deviations and squared them. So right now our units are going to be in square units. So anytime we find the variance, it's going to be in square units. Now, we want to figure out what the standard deviation is. The standard deviation is going to be found, again, that can be highlighted right here, is it's going to be the square root of the population variance. So we're going to take the square root of the answer we just found. So we have to take the square root of 12.8. When you do that, it gives us 3.58. And that would be an in inches. Since we take the square root of the variance, that makes it so our units now are going to be back into simple units. So it'd be 3.58 inches would be your standard deviation. So again, just to iterate what we just did, to find the variance. You need to do a little bit of work before you get started. You first have to figure out what your average is, what your mean is. Once you know what your mean is, you need to find out how much each of those values deviate or differ from the mean. That gives you your column for your deviation. Again, to check your work, if you add them all up, it should equal zero. So that verifies that everything's going good so far. Then you square your deviations. So you take and go through, square those values, add them all up, that gives you your total, your sum of the deviations. Divide that by how many there are, and that gives you your variance, 12.8 square inches. Then to find the standard deviation, take the square root of that previous answer, and you have your standard deviation. So it's a little bit of work, but once you get involved, it's pretty. you can see that it's pretty easy. Now, the way that we would symbolize this is, again, to find the variance, we use this symbol of the sigma squared. And so that means that we take the sum of the squared deviations and divide by how many there are. The way that we'd write that with sigma notation is over here on the right. So again, we're taking each value, subtracting it from the mean and squaring it and finding the sum of those. That's what that sigma notation is representing. And then we divide by the number of values in our population. Then to find the standard deviation, that's symbolized by just the sigma. So that's found by taking the square root of the variance. I know this looks really ugly here, but all that means is we're taking the square root of that symbol that we just talked about. So there you have it. That is how we find the variance in standard deviation of a population. Again, I can't stress enough that this method is used to find the, pop, the standard deviation and variance specifically for a population. In the next video, we're going to see how to do this for a sample. So with that, good luck as you start to try some of those problems in your assignment.